Hi. What's up, everybody? My name is Eyes. I'm a music a producer, producer, and a, I stream that stuff on Twitch. And today, I kind of want to go over showing you how to make animated emotes that are kind of a little bit more advanced. Say you make a face reaction, or you start dancing on stream, and you want to turn that into an emote. This is what that video is going to cover. I'm doing this on a Mac, so I don't know if it's going to translate the same over to Windows, but if you follow along with the video, you should be able to hopefully find some of the information that can transfer over to you doing this kind of thing on Windows. But the main thing that you're going to need to start is CapCut. CapCut is free. There's a subscription to it if you want to use some of, some of the more advanced filters and features, stuff like that. But for this, we don't need that advanced stuff. You can just use it for free. So it's best typically if you have a blank background, you know, green screen, white wall behind you, you know, something like that. But CapCut's pretty good at getting rid of background and keeping humans in there in the first place automatically by through its own generation. I or like generating, I suppose. Let's just get into it real quick. I'm gonna show you the things that I have and some of the things that I use. Again, CapCut's gonna be something you need and Final Cut Pro is going to be something that you'll need as well. Unless you can find something that exports ProRes in the format of 4444. Also, you're gonna need a, probably a green screen picture. So you can just find that on, you know, do a brave search for images of a green screen background. Number one, we have this clip from Soundbytes and he's doing this dance here. First, you pull in your files, you, you have a finder open, you just drag and drop your files in here after you start a new project. Green screen PNG and the video that you want. Okay, so we have our clip. Whenever we drag it in, it's gonna look like this. Now we want our emotes to be square. So you go over to this ratio area, choose this, pick one by one, then it's a square, perfect. But now we have this weird background with a green screen showing. All we have to do is right click the, the clip down here, choose edit and crop. And then this is one of the easier parts here too. You just go to the crop ratio, choose one to one, and then scrub through to get as good of a crop as you can. I'm going to get rid of the timeline and some of this clip here, and then you just confirm. Then we have the whole clip like that. After that, now we pick where we want our emote to start and where we want it to end. You can zoom out with command, or while you hold command and scroll up and down on the mouse wheel. So now we have essentially our emote. Now all you do is click the video, go to video, remove background right there, that little tab, then scroll all the way down if you have to scroll. Check auto removal. It's gonna do this little processing here. So now we have a green screen. It's not absolutely perfect. You can see that there are a lot of missing parts to it sometimes, but the emotes, in size are 112 by 112. So that doesn't 100% matter. Another thing to keep in mind is that your emotes have to, they're capped out at 60 frames in total for your GIF images on Twitch. If you go more than 60 frames, it's not gonna let you upload the emote. If it's 60 frames or fewer, you're good to go. So at this point, say we got the emote. One of the things you wanna do is try to edit it, especially if it's an emote that will be able to loop really easily. You're gonna wanna edit out some of the beginning or the end to make it mesh together. Alternative ways to do it would be to copy it, paste it, right click this, go to edit, and then reverse. Then whenever it reverses the clip, it looks like a smooth, smooth animation. Whenever you convert them to a GIF image, it's gonna bring, it's gonna, the website I'll show you allows you to choose how many frames you want in the emote. Now, the more frames you can have, the smoother the emote is going to be and how the smoother it's going to look on the platform. A couple things to keep in mind. The animated emotes will automatically loop. So instead of trying to make your loop happen perfectly in CapCut, say it's a two second clip and you have it going for 10 seconds. So you have it looped five times. You're going to get fewer frames that way because the entire video file is longer versus making sure it loops smoothly and just having it a two second clip. When you upload the video to the GIF maker, it will give you the option to, how, to choose how many frames you want in that GIF. So if you have a 10 second video, it's gonna be a lot of frames that you're gonna have to cut versus a two second, you can keep it as high as possible. And since it's automatically gonna loop on Twitch, it's just going to be that two second clip looping by itself rather than a 10 second 
pre-looped through CapCut with fewer frames. Kind of hard to explain. I'll kind of give you the example here. This is one of my emotes for whenever I pop in other people's streams or for other people to use. It's two, it's just over two seconds, almost three seconds long. I pop in, what's up, dude? And then I pop out. Then I come back in again because the, the animation loops. So I could export it like this where it's playing on loop, but I'm going to get fewer frames because the clip is longer. What you want to do is make sure, just do this for test purposes, just make sure that your emotes loop cohesively and nicely. Then once you know that they do, you trim the beginning, you trim the end, get rid of that second part and just keep it as short as possible. Because then you can add as many frames as you want in this short little clip and it's going to be a smooth emote. Again, it's just going to loop by itself on the platform because that's how Twitch, Twitch emotes work. So we have his dance emote here. Background is removed. It's all green screen. This is a five second emote pretty much on the dot. At this point, we export it with this button up here or icon. Ch choose the name. You can keep it 1080p H.264 on the codec. That part doesn't 100% matter. The higher quality, the better, but it's going to be reduced down to 112 by 112 on, in terms of pixels. So after you export it, it should put it in, for me, it puts it in movies in a folder called CapCut. This is our next step. You open up Final Cut Pro, create a new project or event, whatever you're more comfortable doing. I just like to make sure that it's a new event for every single time I do an emote. So now I have his dancing emote. And yeah, there's still audio in it. That doesn't matter. Whenever we convert it, it's going to remove the audio. We have the emote then. So you take the whole thing, drag it down here in your timeline. And then you can see that it's a black background because what I did is down here on the right, you should have effects. If you don't have that panel, you could probably search for it. If you go to help search effects, then show in workspace effects, it looks like the keyboard shortcuts going to be command five. So it should bring up all of these effects. Now, when down here, it's kind of hard to see, but at the very bottom, there's a search bar. So what we're going to search here is keyer, K-E-Y-E-R. You select it, you either double click it, or you just drag it onto the file itself. Then it removes the green screen background and just makes it black. At that point, the emote is done. What you want to do is make sure now that you export this file under Apple ProRes, I think 4444. We're going to go up here to the share icon. I just want to show how to make sure that your master file is set to the correct codec. Under your destinations here, choose master file, video only, you don't need audio, video codec, this is the this is the important part, Apple ProRes 4444. If you can find an, an equivalent to be able to get that kind of ProRes 4444 on Windows, you're gonna be set. File is where you're gonna go, share, then you're gonna choose master file. It's gonna bring up this menu, you, you name it, you hit next, and for me, it exports to my movies folder on my Mac. Okay, so now the editing part is done. This is kind of the simple last few steps here. What I like to do now is open my web browser. I'm using Brave. Then go to easygif.com, easygif.com. We're going to choose video to GIF, choose the file, upload the video. We're going to wait for this to upload right quick. We have the video right here. We now choose the frame rate. Now remember, Twitch emotes are a maximum of 60 frames. So we're going to try and go to the maximum and see where we can go. Select the max, convert to GIF, allow it to convert. Right down here, you can see that the frames are 165. Those are too many frames. We're going to have to cut it pretty dramatically. Okay, at this point, it's a lot more choppy, but still smooth enough. And believe it or not, we've landed right on 60 frames. So we're set. Now, click the resize and then add your width and height. On your width, 112. On your height, 112. Resize the image. There's your Twitch emote. Right click it, save it, and then it's in your downloads folder and you're set to go. After that, you upload it to your Twitch dashboard and get your emote code that you want and then you're set to go. I hope that this video helps. If you feel like I've missed a step or you have further questions, feel free to leave a comment. I appreciate your guys' time. Thank you for being here and have a good one.